Last video, I was tasked with rebuilding our freshwater tank system. I knew that the stormy season here along the Mayan Riviera was coming, and getting water from the dock with a hose through the window would not be convenient. We received emergency support from our viewers, and the epoxy started flowing again to get this project finished. The haloed sun notified us of the approaching weather. Come on, Ivy, come on inside! But somehow we were caught unawares. I think we just got hit by a supercell like a tornado. Rafiki's still standing. I didn't get the worst of it on camera, but we would confirm later that a tornado did in fact leave a distinct path of destruction throughout the neighborhood. Everything on the port side was thrown to the starboard side, including ourselves and the family dogs. Anyways, there was a water tank to install. The whole reason that we were going with the flexible water tank was for ease of installation and it was easy to ship here. In theory, it was just screw on, attach the pipes, and play. There was ample room for the flexible water tank to sit, and no part of the tank would be squished, punctured, or chafed inside its nice new box. Yeah, but of course, we weren't going to get away with having this nice functioning system so easily. Yeah, I can't really see what you're doing in there. We've had these tanks before, for years. We've used them over the span of about four years, the 150 liters. We had them on my way, the 150 liters, and then we transferred those to Rosa. Those tanks were great. I put a hole in one, so that's what all this work has been about, is making a water tank containment area for them that contains no spikes or pieces of fiberglass or a piece of wood that can puncture them. No matter how much you tighten them, after a while they get loose and you can you can turn another quarter turn, you see? Yeah. So we're filling up the tank for the first time and immediately we're tightening and tightening this bottom one and it just keeps on getting loose and water coming out. We thought, well, a small leak might be workable and perhaps we can continue by tightening the attachment over time. However, the situation went from unpleasant to awful. This is right about the moment where I realized that we would have to bail all 200 liters out of the bilge. Wow, a lot of water running here. Yeah, it all came out this hole. Well, that's no good. You were hoping to have a brand new system for your water and look at that. It's a disaster. This thing is coming out like very easily, right? Yep. When you fill it with the weight, it just popped up. It popped up, yeah. Robbie put it on nice and tight and it's just popping up. Yeah, I saw that. We have had to so-called weld other parts of our freshwater system already in our boat. Like the whale foot pump here. 5200 on the attachment points is a must. Several days later. We've emptied the tank a little bit and we're going to try alternative ways of closing this bottom attachment. I'm going to try a little bit of Teflon tape. The problem is that this tank's attachment, which is different from the first tanks we had on my way. And it's slightly softer than it's the It's softer. It pops off. That's what I was filming the other day was that it was, our problem wasn't that the seal wasn't a proper seal. At some point we, we tightened it, we tightened it, it was on, it looked perfectly well uh, threaded on and then I lifted it to see what was going on and it just popped off and kept on popping off. Well, actually the Teflon tape was absolutely useless and we ended up removing the gasket between the elbow fitting and the tank opening. Oddly, that has done the trick. No more leaks and the attachment hasn't popped off again. Just as things were starting to get wet, my GoPro started shutting down. But a new piece of filming equipment came in the mail just last night. Is the iPhone X waterproof? Is it actually waterproof? The iPhone, yes, the iPhone X is designed to be waterproof up to one meter, approximately three feet. Okay, you want it? Yeah. A waterproof iPhone X, sent to us by our supporters Andrew and Monica. And thank you, just in time. So now we could capture Crystal Ball in all its gray-skied glory. With the wind coming from the southeast, we prepared to let the aft and spring lines go if the wind would be hitting the boat too strongly on the side. 
This amazing little bird nest survived the tornado and now was hanging on again for dear life. Our neighbors prepared as well by catching out their anchor into the canal. We are well protected in the canal, originally a mangrove ecosystem, but we watched anxiously all day as the storm surge threatened to rise the sea above the ground level. What do we do when we run out of dock? We just run out of dock. We just stay tied to it even though it's underwater and hopefully the wind is pushing us away from it. We have a tire to separate us. Keep us pretty far off for now. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> hurricane! Surprise! Hurricane! <laughs> <laughs> As the evening progressed, the water level stayed pretty much the same. The wind blew mightily, but it was all bark and no bite. The weather brought out all the local critters. It scared away most beachgoers, but this weather did not scare away the wave and kite surfers. High tide brings in beauty and also a little bit of not so pretty stuff. I have to admit, when I look at this wind and wave, I don't think great times for sailing, but these folks do. Good on them. Newly noticed residents next to our hull, Robbie saw these little sailfin mollies. They can survive in brackish water. This is also a fish that we never noticed around here before. That's an amazing forehead on this guy. Cooking just before the stormy weather, Robbie caught this Mexican look down while casting off the beach. For the extended jaw. What a beautiful fish. It's a more delicate fish. The more delicate the fish, the more you can appreciate that it's feeding you and your whole family. This is where Robbie's fine knife skills matter most, to make sure that nothing is wasted. There's not much meat on there. The skin and things. If I, if I skin this, there's nothing left. It's got nice cheeks. <laughs> You've got nice cheeks. <laughs> All this bone has flavor in it. There's meat in between the bones. Look at that fish, that fish that is so weird, eh? Yeah, my head of poisson, it's really bizarre. Robbie took a rest while his mama cooked tonight. Her Caribbean recipes are more simple than his spice-filled monstrosities, so it would mix well with the small, delicate look down. Although you find onion, chili, fish, and plantain here in Mexico easily enough, make some it's harder to find makrut lime. Celine and Tony grew their own, and so we are extremely lucky to have this fresh green leaf herb available. Do we have pepper corn? No, we only have powder. We have an orange and we have a very old lime. Makrut lime sometimes goes by another name, but I just learned that the name is derogatory one, and I won't use it here. It's just onion and fish skeleton boiling to create a broth until she adds just one clove of garlic and the makrut leaves. Lots and lots of taste tests to make sure that everything is releasing the flavor nicely. 
and then slowly, slowly add the plantain, a pinch of salt, another taste test, and the delicate fillets of fish as we are nearing the end. Lemon juice. 